Hello, my friends. The folks behind Driver 4 VR offered to have me review their full body tracking software. The deal with it is if you have an Xbox Connect, you can use this in conjunction with their software to get full body tracking inside Steam VR. I happen to have an old Xbox Connect laying around, and so I thought I'd give it a spin and let you know my thoughts on the software. And for full disclosure, I was paid for this review. So to start things off, your Xbox Connect will need a special adapter. By default, your Xbox Connect has an orange and strange USB connector at the end. So you'll need an adapter to give it power and to allow it to plug into your PC's USB port. After you've chosen a good spot for your Xbox to stand, download both their Driver 4 VR software and the Microsoft Connect driver for Windows. After those are installed, just fire up Steam VR and then use the Driver 4 Connect configuration tool to get the Connect configured. And that process is really easy. You just stand in place and then move forward and move back, and then the software is calibrated. And you don't need to recalibrate unless you move your Connect somewhere else. After the calibration is done, you can look down to see that you now have feet and hip trackers, just like if you were using additional Vive trackers. After that, any game that supports additional trackers will be fooled into thinking that you're wearing additional trackers. I tested this with some games that utilize full body tracking, but unfortunately not very many games do. Inside Island 359, I was able to successfully kick dinosaurs. Alright, kicked a raptor to death. In Tornuffalo, I was able to move around and kick debris out of the way. And I also played around in VR chat. The body tracking works really well with the exception of one big downside. And that downside is that if you're used to full room scale where you can spin around in as many directions as you want, you won't have that freedom of movement using a Kinect. You can turn a little bit, but you can't turn more than 90 degrees because you need to keep facing the Kinect for everything to work. Now to be fair, that's a limitation of the Kinect hardware, not necessarily the software. But I feel it's one really big note to keep in mind, because when I was playing Island 359, I kept naturally turning around in room scale, forgetting that I have to keep facing forward, and to turn using the buttons in the game, not turning my body. Now in some cases that doesn't really matter, because a game like Tornuffalo doesn't even permit you to turn around. In Tornuffalo you have to keep facing forward in the game, so in a game like that you won't even notice. But like I said, with Island 359, I had to keep reminding myself to not turn around. So that's about all there is to it. It's simple to set up and it's easy to use. Now, it's not for everyone. Uh, this won't be in use by myself in my day-to-day -day VR play because the number of games that support full body tracking are really limited. And I'm not a huge VR chat fan, but I imagine if you are, this could be providing some value to you. I will say it's a really cool technical solution and workaround because it's so much cheaper than buying two or three Vive trackers. That would add up a lot in cost. And it's also just really elegant solution. It's really creative and pretty cool with the obvious downside that you can't fully turn around. I feel like if you own a VR arcade, this could be an interesting solution. Like if you have a VR game where you're always facing forward, like a soccer game where you're kicking a goal, this could be an interesting setup inside a VR arcade because it's so easy to get up and running for people to kick a soccer ball, for example. There's a free trial version of the software. It's fully functional, but it's limited in its time span. I think you're limited by like a week or 10 hours, something like that. The full version of the software is 20 bucks. So I appreciate how it's a really cool and elegant workaround for full body tracking, but it has its limitations. So this has been another, uh, I guess it's not a hardware review. It's been a software review. I was going to say hardware review. Anyway, it's been a review. <laughs> Thank you for joining me, and we'll see you later. All right, bye. Well, that's it for now. Thanks so much for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe. See ya.